Well, good morning, good morning, good morning. Here we are yet once again. It is Monday morning, which means that it is Mission Monday and Motivation Monday, and we are just excited, excited, excited uh, that you join today. You know, and as always, you know, I, 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 I welcome it and I thank you for taking the time for joining me today. And as, as I said before, I never take for granted the time that you give me, but more importantly, it's the time that you give God, you know? And so of course, always, as I do, let's begin in prayer. Father, I am your servant. Use me today, Lord God. Hide me behind the cross that your people will hear you and see you and not me. Let your word go forth today, Lord God. Let something be said that will pierce the heart of those and allow them and make them want to come and know you better, Lord God. Touch them in a special way. Meet them where they are and address all their needs and concerns today, Lord God. We thank you in the name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. Well, over the weekend, as, as I was uh, sitting in my living room and, and the curtains were drawn back and, and I looked out to the backyard, the weather was simply just beautiful. Uh, a light breeze was flowing through the leaves on the trees and, and in the distance I could hear the planes taking off. Of course, headed to places unknown, but I could still hear. But my view remained focused and, and I looked again at, at the leaves and I thought about the, the winds going to the trees, to the leaves and, and, and it was invisible. I could see the movement of the leaves, but I, I could not see what was causing them to move. I know we have radar that can tell us the direction that the winds will come from and, and the directions that they may go. You know, systems that measure the wind speed, but but no one can see the wind. Now, for me, when I think about it, you know, there's there's nothing better than feeling the spirit of the Lord as it travels in the winds, especially in a nice, cool, gentle breeze. You know, and I'm thankful for the life that, that God has given me. And, and hopefully that you're thankful for the life that he has given you. Yet having come this far in life, I know that there are times or moments in our lives when, when the winds of change can be felt, almost like the radar unit that, that allows the trained eyes of the, the weather teams to, to give us focus for the days to come. At times in our lives, there are indicators that change is coming, change is headed our way, there are situations that alert us that change is needed. But most importantly, what we need to know is that sometimes change must take place within us. Change that will prepare us for what God is getting ready to do in our lives. A.C. Benson put it this way. He said that very often a change of self is needed more than a change of scene. You know, uh, change sometimes comes, and when it does, it comes sometimes at a risk. You know, Bob Iger said that this way, he says, the riskiest thing that, that we can do is just maintain the status quo. Yes, change requires that you take risk. And sometimes the greatest risk that we must overcome is the tendency not to believe in ourselves, not to believe that, that you can be great, that you are great, that you are unique, and that you are one of a kind, a force to be reckoned with, as people would say. And you say, why? Why, because God made you great. And you say, all right then, Pastor, I hear what you're saying, but how do I know that I'm great? Well, think about it this way and look at it this way. You know, First Peter and First Peter two and nine. Uh, it says that you've been chosen by God. That by you know you've been chosen by Him, God Himself. You know, people may overlook you, they may reject you, but you know what? That, that's okay. That's okay. 
because the one who matters most has chosen you and accepts you. So you are not randomly chosen either, not by accident, not by spinning of the of the bottle on the table, not by the roulette wheel, but you've not been randomly chosen. There is no luck involved here. You got with a purpose. God set out with a purpose. And he looked at you and he said, I choose him. He's my son. I choose her. She's my daughter. He said that, that, that what I did, I did purposely with intention. And I have now placed you on my team. Now, again, understand that the enemy is going to be busy. The enemy may try to convince you that, that you're not good enough, not deserving enough. Oh, but God. You see, God says you are his masterpiece, chosen for such a time as this. And Ephesians reminds us of that in Ephesians 2. And he goes a step further in the word in Jeremiah, and the word of the Lord came and saying, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sat you apart and I appointed you. You see, when we get to those places that we understand that God is an intentional God and what God did for you in heaven was intentional. Making you great was intentional. Setting you apart was intentional. So don't be afraid to be different. You know, Roy Whittaker said one of his quotes, he says, the beginning of greatness is to be different. And the beginning of failure is to be the same. So listen, hear my words. God made you different. To lead and not to follow. You know, uh, Robert Rodriguez had a word, and I, I like the way he said it. He says, sometimes it's good not to follow the herd, to go the other way. Sometimes if everyone's going that way, then you go the other way. You know, going against the grain may mean that you're going to stumble. But you may also stumble upon an idea that no one, no one else has come up with. An answer to a problem that, that no one else could solve. You know, and in going the other way, you may even find a cure that will change the lives of millions. You know, sometimes it's okay to lead and not follow. Uh, when I was reading a quote from Shonja Rhimes, who, who has blessed us with so many TV shows, and, and I looked at it and I thought about it, and I said, this is an interesting one. I'll share this with you. She said, you can waste your lives drawing lines or you can live your life crossing them. To lead and not follow comes with risk sometimes. And to be ready for that, then we must be willing to change. See, change may come at a risk. God reminds us that, that we never walk alone, though. That as he walked with Moses and with Joshua, he reminded them that, uh, that he would never leave nor forsake them. That there will be moments in your lives on this road. There will be challenges and there may be rough times and tough times. But there will also be times, you know, this is when I can, when I can call on you to lead change. I'm preparing you to be in a position to lead change. I'm getting you ready for the things that I know that you can handle. That's why change is coming. So be prepared for that. And be ready for that and be open to accept that. You know, I've heard over the years in, in the uh, serenity prayer, and if you haven't heard it, I'll, I'll read it to you, but I want to add my little, my little piece to that. <laughs> If you don't mind, the, the uh, serenity prayer says, God grant me the serenity to accept the things that I cannot change. For those things belong to you, God. 
because nothing is impossible for you. And then it says, but grant me the courage, you know, to change the things that I can. Because you've given me the strength and you've given me the ability, you've given me the wisdom to be able to make to be able to make those changes. But then God it goes on and he says, but then Lord God, grant me the wisdom to know the difference between the things that belong to you. Oh, and the things that you've given me the strength and ability to change on my own along with you. And for that, we thank you for that. We thank you for that. We know that change is, is there. Sometimes change has to take place inside of us. Sometimes the change will take us to places and people and, and do things that we didn't think that we could ever do. Sometimes change occurs because the plan that we put in place is not necessarily the, the plan that God has for us. But he also reminds us that all good things come from me. That no matter what, that no matter what, that I come to you and I bring you good things. That I stand with you, that I love you, and I'll always be with you. As a matter of fact, I love you so much that I that I sent my son Jesus. That he would come to this planet and understand what does it mean to be frail? What does it mean to be broken? What does it mean to deal with temptation? What does it mean? to know and understand the struggles and, and challenges that we face in life. I understand, I always I did understand, but I just wanted to let you know that I was sending my son. But in the midst of it all, I know that there was a sacrifice that needed to be made so that I, so that you could come back to me and have a way back to the kingdom. So I sent my son, he sacrificed himself and he died for you. Change had to come, and he was a change agent, a radical one. But the one thing that he didn't change was for his love that he had for the Father, the commitment that he had to the Father, and also the commitment he has to us. Even in death, it never changed. And even now today, it has not changed. We just have to be bold and strong enough to walk into that change. And let us close in prayer. By your heads, if you will. Lord, as I prepare my heart and my mind for change, I ask that you grant your divine grace to me. Grace that will make things clear to me. Help me to make this change, Lord God, because I may not be able to do it all on my own, but help me, Lord God. Order my steps, lead and guide me as only you can. But Lord, I look to you for all my strength and guidance. Allow your way of life to rule in my life, to rule in my thoughts, to rule in my actions. We thank you today, Lord God, just for being there for us. And as always, Lord, in our prayer, we always pray for our leaders. We always pray for those who are in the places that need to make critical decisions about what happens in our society, in our world today. We pray, Lord God, that you will move in their hearts and stir them so that all that they do, they'll do in your name. We pray for that, Lord God. And as always, we pray for the nurses, the doctors, the technicians that are out there, Lord God. We pray for the caregivers in the silent rooms, the caregivers in the hospice centers, the caregivers up late at night, Lord God, knowing that they have an 8, 10, 12-hour shift to do. The caregivers that are there, Lord God, strengthen them and be with them. Father, of course, we pray for our first responders, for our firefighters who run into the flames. The police, Lord God, who move toward the gunshots. First responders who arrive in hopes to save lives early on. We thank you for them, Lord God. And then, Lord God, I'd be remiss if I didn't pray for this world we're in. 
God, we pray for unity in a world that is so greatly divided, a world where wars and rumors of wars are all about us. We pray for the millions around the world that have been displaced and are hungry. So Lord, we ask you to feed them and to cover them. We ask you to move in ways that only you can. Hear our prayer today, O oh Lord. Is it in the name of Jesus that we pray? Amen. Well, amen, amen, everyone. Listen, I said before, it's, it's Motivation Monday. Thank you again, as always, for being with me. And again, you never walk alone. I'm here with you. I'm here for you. Information will pop up on the screen on how you can contact me or just put a prayer on our prayer wall. But it's important that you know that God loves you. I love you. So go with grace and walk in this love. Everyone have a great week. Thank you for joining.